Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 24. This video we're going to be taking a look at our spark modifier tables as well as our cranking ignition that we're going to be programming in our MTune software. Now our spark modifier tables allow us an offset based on intake air temperature or engine coolant temperature against our main spark timing table. These will allow us to characterize our spark timing delivery for any condition we might be operating our engine in. Now in addition to this, we'll find that we have a cranking ignition timing value that we need to deal with. This will allow us proper ignition timing in cranking conditions, making sure the engine is going to fire off as quick as possible and we can avoid engine kickback when we have too high of a spark timing advance. We're going to be talking about a lot of details within this video. Let's jump in so we can check everything out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our spark timing modifier tables as well as our cranking ignition within our max ECU applications. These modifier tables need to be in place so that we can offset our spark timing against our main spark timing table if we have too high of an intake air temperature or engine coolant temperature gets too high or if our engine coolant temperature is very low and the engine is cold, we need to go in and have an offset. Now, there's going to also be a cranking ignition timing. That's going to be when we're in cranking additions, what we want to command our spark timing at. That'll override whatever is coming from our main spark timing table. Let's break this down in this video and understand how this is all going to work and how we can program our modifier and our crank timing table specific for the engine and the application we're working with. So the first thing I want to do here is jump into our navigation bar and go down here under tuning and then go and expand that out and jump down here under ignition angle table. The ignition angle table is going to be where we command our base spark timing value from. So this table is going to assume that we're at average ambient temperature conditions, maybe 60, 80 degrees air temperature as it's entering the engine. It's also going to be assuming that the engine has been warmed up. So we're not at something like 60 degrees temperature or 100 degrees Fahrenheit temperature in our coolant temperature. It's going to be assuming that the engine is at 160, 180, 200 degrees temperature and we're in our normal operation range and zone. So it's going to be assuming average air temperatures and it's going to also assume the engine has been warmed up. Now that's the same kind of idea here when we're taking a look at our main fuel table. We talked about this in a separate video. We have modifier tables that will modify what the injector pulse width is coming from this base VE calculation that's going on within our table. This is going to be characterizing the volume flow or the estimation of volume flow of air coming into our engine. But when we're dealing with something like our intake air temp changing or the elevation changing, our barrel pressure will change, we'll notice that those will have to compensate and correct against our main table because this is volume and those will compensate density. Together, then we could estimate the actual air mass that's entering the engine. And we know that we need to have those modifier tables in place in order to get that fuel model right. That's the same idea as we're dealing with our spark timing modifier tables. So we have an intake air temp compensation. We have an engine coolant temp compensation that will allow us to characterize any operation zone or point of our engine. And the spark timing is going to be an offset against these base values that we command. So if we're going in and we're saying that we want to go in and pool timing as intake air temperature increases, which is generally the idea we want to go and do, so we avoid having too high of a combustion temperature, which leads to knocker pre-ignition, then we're going to use our modifier table to accomplish that. When the engine is too warm, if it's overheating, we're going to find we want to reduce our spark timing because we don't want the engine to run and getting to knock or pre-ignition conditions because at a very hot temperature, it's gonna be more likely to knock or pre-ignite. So there's gonna be these reasons why we wanna offset our spark timing. And we'll find the modifier tables will simply either add timing or subtract timing globally across this entire table. So let's break that down. Let's take a look at that right now. So first thing I wanna do is jump into ignition and then we're gonna go in here under ignition correction. Under ignition correction, we will find our IET correction table and our CLT or coolant temp correction table. Well fine, let's first start off here with our IET correction table. This table is based on our intake air temperature. We're going to find here that we see it all the way at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, all the way up here to 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this table here starts off between 68 and 104. Notice that our values are at zero degrees correction. In this situation, we're assuming that this ignition table here is operating, or intake air temp is going to be compensating and operating within that range. And if we're getting outside that range, that's where we need to go in and have further modification above and beyond what this table is going to be able to characterize. That's what the purpose here and what this table is going to represent. Now, this particular base map from Max ECU, as I'm looking at this generic file, we're going to find that the actual ignition timing is advanced here 
as we're going further and further lower in intake air temperature. This is something that I would not recommend doing. We don't want to increase our ignition timing. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.